Kendall, how are you today? Are you serious? Okay. Oh, seriously? Okay, come here. Come here. Well, it is a little beautiful. 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 Say hi to your friends. Say hi to your friends. Say hi to your friends. Say hi, friends. Say hi, friends. Do you like my makeup? Does it smell nice? Does it smell nice? It's been a while since this little lady gets to interrupt a beauty video. She was in the last two, I think, Fat Fit Fun videos, but she hasn't been in a makeup video in a hot minute. For some reason, every time I'm sitting in this chair, I do intro and outro, and she's like, is it my cue? Hold on. Let me fluff my curls. Today I'm here with the Get Ready With Me. It's been a hot minute since we do one of these. We're going to talk about all kinds of YouTube beauty community um, things. Um, nothing too exciting. In fact, I'm just talking to you while I get ready, which is in hopes that I will keep you company when you're getting ready. Today we're going to do this look and it is a look that a lot of you guys asked me about surprisingly. So this is the makeup that I did in a weekend vlog and I also had the same face during um, my JCPenney campaign. Um, and a lot of you guys asked me about it. I was like, this is my go-to look when I wanna do a lot of makeup. You know, it's always like a bronzy, uh, burgundy, maroonish, orangey, burnt brown type color. I just named all the colors of the rainbow in that second. Anyway, if you guys want to see how I got this look, all you have to do is keep on watching. Alright you guys, let's go ahead and get started. I have missed you so much. I don't remember the last time I was in this room. Um, I have this sort of animosity towards it right now that I'm trying to shake off and it's kind of challenging to get myself to sit here. I even find myself gathering my makeup and then taking it somewhere else and getting ready there. Um, but we'll get into it once we actually get started and get this ball rolling because we don't want to come back with a get ready with me that's two hours long. That's what vlogs are for. <laughs> so um, we are going to get ready and the goal for today's video is to replicate the look that I did um, in my JCPenney video, in a weekend vlog, it was sort of like a burgundy, bronzy, smoky eye. It was pretty wearable, it's nothing dramatic. Um, in fact, I find myself doing that look mostly when I wanna do something with color. Um, so I want to actually try this new product in this video, so. If our entire Get Ready With Me goes awry, it's because of the new Ula Henriksen Banana Bright Face Primer. This has been super hyped on YouTube and trying to stay away and deflect all the drama that's happening. I find myself watching a lot of actual makeup videos, <laughs> trying to dodge the other ones. Um, I live for the day where all of us people of all ages and all backgrounds and all just <laughs> stay in your lane, <laughs> mind your business, you know, just, I feel like we spend so much time worrying about stuff that we shouldn't and we're swindling such a precious treasure that you can't get back and that's time, you know, I feel like we have this very common and, and uh, comfortable mentality of there's always tomorrow, but there isn't always a tomorrow. And there's so much time spent on things that are just so lame, you know? I always look to YouTube as a place of companionship and a place to distract me. This stuff feels amazing, by the way. So the hype might be real. This is a primer. Um, that it's a vitamin C primer that's supposed to bring hydration to the skin. It's supposed to give you a hydrating feeling, but also a glowy and blurred um, look. So feel and look. Just how long did that take me to get that out? Okay, we are going to go back to some oldies but goodies. We are going to use the Urban Decay One and Done as our base, and we are going to use uh, Tarte don't remember the name of it. The Tarte concealer that I used every day for like my entire life. Shape tape, how could I forget? Oh my gosh, you guys. Sorry if you guys hear some landscaping. I'm not gonna stop filming like I did the last time. 
it's just it is what it is right now so we're just gonna have to deal so if you guys will allow me to pontificate just for maybe five minutes okay maybe for five minutes while I apply my foundation closing just one eye which a lot of you have noticed I do that for a lot of things just closing one eye I find it very bizarre but it works and um, I don't see double which is a common reason why people tend to close one eye is when they you know their eyes cross or they see double um, I don't I don't know it just it's something that I've always done and it I never realized how weird it looked until I saw until I saw your comments and then I watched it again and I was like oh all right so now we have some ticks um urban decay one and done I'm in the shade medium because I don't know if you guys have noticed but just I'm gonna brag for a second I'm a little tan right now yep yep it's that it's that time of the year again where every other line out of my mouth is uh talking about my tan so okay just allow me to get this off my chest <sighs> when I started YouTube I told you guys and I said this it's not a mystery I talk about it enough where I'm sure most of you have heard it before when I started YouTube uh, it was because I was lonely in a new city and I wanted to make friends and I started to watch um, YouTube um, to feel better about myself um, and so I started as a viewer and it was my escape from my personal life. It was my escape um, to learn something new. It was my escape to feel like I was part of a community and I could make friends and there were other people trying to find out the same thing, like which naked palette was better. Um, that was one of my first deep dive searches on YouTube was which naked palette should I get? One? or two. I invested so much time watching Naked 1 and Naked 2 videos that um, I ended up making the wrong choice and then I ended up being a YouTuber and having both and just it's so bizarre how life works. So for me YouTube is a place of community. It is a place of learning or education. It's a place where I'm gonna go um, to find out how to patch concrete. And it's a place where, you know, Parker goes because he wants to fix uh, our washer and he wants to see, you know, how to take it apart and put it back together because we don't have the manual. So it's a place to learn. It's a place of community. It's a place that builds your confidence. Um, and I hate that it's become a place of drama. Now, it's obviously a gross generalization that I'm making um, talking about drama in the beauty community because the beauty community is like 1% of what's on YouTube. Um, but I feel very bothered that it's on mainstream uh, platforms like E! News. Um, it's kind of one of those things, okay? This is a really vulgar example, it's very crass, and I hate that I'm making it, but hate and negativity and drama are like flies on a pile of If you don't pick up the turd, it's gonna get covered in flies, right? So, we perpetuate this type of behavior by giving attention to this type of behavior, you know, and without picking sides and without talking about specific channels and without talking about specific YouTube celebrities that promote this type of behavior. Um, we as consumers have a choice, you know, we have a choice um, to choose to watch what we want to see and the only reason these channels and people catch so much attention is because we give it to them. You guys, this with this this your base, this your top. It's like they're soulmates. Oh my gosh. My skin looks flawless. <laughs> Humble prep. <laughs> anyway, what I'm getting at, and this is going to be like my closing point, is it's hard for me to come back with beauty content because I don't want to be associated with the beauty community sometimes. And it only hurts me it only hurts me and my channel and the algorithm and if I show up as a suggested video because I'm trying to lay low. Um, shape tape, this is medium, light medium. Um, I know that, you know, I know I'm only hurting myself and I know that I am a tiny little baby guppy in a giant sea full of whales and sharks. 
but as a human with feelings, I just, I hate that, you know, it's just, it's disgusting behavior and it's, it's just, it makes me not want to, to be here and to be talking about beauty because, you know, beauty and cosmetics and products like these are a conversation that we have or a community that we establish because we want to feel pretty. We want to look pretty. We want to improve the way that we look or feel better about the way that we look. But what's happening to the way that we feel on the inside? Why is no one talking about making ourselves pretty on the inside? You know, why are we focused on, um, hey, you know, let's talk about the latest and greatest beauty products, but, but we're being really, really um, unkind to each other. Because I don't care how I look on the outside. If I'm a troll on the inside, like no matter how much amount of makeup I put on, it's not gonna change that. No matter how much makeup I eat, it's not gonna change that, you know? And so it's just, it gets hard feeling like, man, I wanna promote kindness and I wanna promote kindness and I wanna talk about beauty products that make me feel pretty, but I'm having to compete with channels that get millions and millions of views because they're fighting with each other or they are, um, you know, promoting cancel culture and just <laughs> grown up cyberbullying, <laughs> you know? Anyway, the point is, it's challenging for me to sit here in front of you guys, talk about makeup, put on makeup, and be like, let's feel pretty when it's not a pretty climate right now. But I sure do feel pretty right now. I forgot how much I love Shape Tape. Wow, and it's like my perfect color too for coverage and brightening. So light, medium. You know why light, medium works so well for me right now? I bet you can guess. I'm just gonna give you a hint. <laughs> you guys, I'm the worst! <laughs> I have to get my hair out of my face. because It's so hard to put on makeup with all these little fuzzy hairs everywhere. Okay, so let's smooth out a little bit of this too much concealer that I put on. Do you guys do that? Like everything in excess? That's me. It's like, oh, the recipe calls for rosemary? One sprig of rosemary? Sure, let's add 17. That's just excess, that's me. That's me, personality, everything. Um, okay, so I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with my vlogs. A lot of you avoid them like the plague because you see the timestamp and you're like, holy mackerel, two hours? Danny, who do you think you are? You know, the Avengers? <laughs> So my vlogs are long and I don't know why they're so long because like I'll watch like Leanne's vlogs. Leanne says, I love her vlogs. I love her little kazoo intro. It's so cute. Um, and I'm like, her vlogs are like 20 minutes. And she's like, oh my God, my vlog was so long. I had to split it up and it's still 20 minutes, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, and her vlog is so satisfying and full of exciting information but it's not an hour and 40 minutes. So how does she do it? Like, how can I make my vlogs short, complete, but satisfying? How can I do that? You'll need to leave me some advice. Anyway, what I'm getting at with this whole vlog talk is that I started a cooking channel. It's not really complete right now. There's like not even a banner up there. There might be a picture by the time you guys see this video. Um, but. Um, in order for me to start that channel, I need to get my website up, which is where I'm going to post like the accompanying blog post if there's like a recipe or some sort of handout or something that relates to the video. I need a landing zone. So um, the channel is called Cooking Break with Danny and it's gonna be all about cooking. I mean, the science of cooking. So obviously we're gonna do recipes together, but it's also going to be why I use the knives I use, which knives you need, um, items for beginners, like which tools do you actually need as a beginner? Because I feel like if you're a foodie, you have way too many gadgets. If you're a beginner, you need like 10% of those things, you know? Eating is a physiological need, and in order to eat, we need to be able to produce food to eat, correct? And um, always eating takeout or buying pre-made food. I hate to use the word process because everywhere you look now, something's gonna be processed to some capacity. 
So buying pre-made food um, is a way to feed ourselves, but um, we are all capable of cooking, all of us. I don't care how clumsy you are, I don't care how um, you are in your 30s or 40s and never learned how to cook, we are all 100% capable of cooking in the kitchen. Um, and so that channel is going to be about giving you guys that confidence because I feel like a lot of times it comes from a place of either fear and intimidation or I don't have time. And um, those are both really, really valid reasons. Time is so challenging, you guys. Making time, carving out time, having enough time, having enough just time for the stuff you need to do. And then you're like, okay, why would I want to waste hours in the kitchen where I could just go swing by a store and get a, like a roasted chicken, right? And then the other thing is being scared in the kitchen. Being scared in the kitchen is a very bad thing because that's when accidents happen. That's when you cut yourself. That's when you burn yourself. That's when you set your house on fire. Um, so fear is a very valid emotion, but learning how to feel comfortable and safe in a kitchen is very easy. So that's gonna be the premise of that channel is uh, easy recipes, hard recipes, tools, why, brands, um, specific uh, ingredients, spices, the difference between seasoning and flavoring, um, which spices you need in your cabinet, which you'll never use, kind of stuff like that. So um, I need to have a landing zone or a place where you guys can refer to, to either ask a direct question or refer to the recipe, something you can bookmark, you know, because as easy as it is to explain something in a video, sometimes you don't want to rewatch a 25 minute video. You don't have time to rewatch a 25 minute video. Or maybe you want to um, print out the recipe and keep it with your other recipes and maybe take notes. So if I don't have a site, a landing spot to use or to have all these resources for you guys, um, I'm not going to be successfully teaching you what I'm talking about in a video. So you can't go back and watch a 25 minute video just to learn how to make chicken, right? But if you can bookmark the site or the blog post or whatever, you can have it on your phone, you can have it on your iPad, you can just pull it up. You could click on the recipe, blow it up, and you can print it. It would be a PDF, so you can actually add your own personal notes to it and add it to the rest of your recipes. So I can't do any of that just with the YouTube video. Um, the description box is very limited and there's only enough room for the recipe and the steps. But what if I wanted to tell you, um, hey, do you guys remember the blog post where I talked about why Calphalon Contemporary is the best cookware ever and that's what you need and that's all you need in your collection? Then it's a lot easier to be like, here's the blog post or the accompanying blog post or whatever. So that channel is actually live now. There's just no content on it. So if you think that would be something that is interesting or appealing to you, or you might be able to learn something, I'll leave the link to it um, in the description box of this video. Anastasia Brow is in taupe, Glossier Boy Brow in brunette, um, actually in brown, and that's gonna be my brow gel. I really like this one because the taupe brow pencil right now looks a little too ashy with my hair color because my hair color pulls really golden. Um, and so this kind of deepens the color of my brows. It really helps the sista out. All right, so we are going to do eyes next. And for eyes, we used um, an eyeshadow stick or a caviar stick from Laura Mercier. And we used the gingerbread spice palette from Too Faced. So that's what we're gonna do on eyes now. But before we do that, let's take some of this extra powder and apply it to my face because y'all know how I apply my eyeshadow. A lot of you guys asked for um, me to show you how I did this eyeshadow and I was like, is it even seasonally appropriate? You know how some people are like, oh, I don't do those colors during the summer. I'm like, oh, mm, well, I guess we could just come back to it 
in the fall or the winter when it's gingerbread related. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. If you're unfamiliar, the gingerbread spice palette looks like this. Um, it was a limited edition palette from Too Faced, but if you guys look at the colors in this palette, it's really nothing um, out of this world, super unique, super interesting, super different. It's really just um, jewel tones that are very um, warm warm jewel tones so you have a lot of coppers burgundies orangey burnt orange burnt brown type terracotta shades i just went ahead and took powdered sugar that's the matte vanilla shade on a flat shader brush and that's going to go underneath my brow bone this is a really really solid color i love how opaque it is i have such a love hate relationship with Too Faced, you guys i'm like I hate some of their collections, and then I really love some of their collections, you know? <laughs> so it's like, I can't cancel culture, Too Faced! <laughs> Can we just take five minutes to talk about how fast my hair grows? I, I just did it five minutes ago, you know? It's, it's crazy. Okay, Laura Mercier. Their caviar sticks are some of the best eyeshadow sticks I've ever used. But if you're looking for one, just one to go to, one that's amazing, one that will always look good, one that can take you from day to night, one that can be used as a base, as a color on its own, <sighs> very unique but very neutral, Burnished Bronze is the best color. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is shameful. Let's try this again. Burnished Bronze. <laughs> is the most beautiful, most amazing, most beautiful, I know I already said that, caviar stick out there. So it like pulls purple, it pulls burgundy, it's a little maroon, but it's also metallic, but it's not metallic where it, you know, it looks like a night color. Um, it's just awesome, man. I couldn't find it on the Sephora website for a very long time, and when I went to a Laura Mercier event, I told them, I was like, why would you guys discontinue burnished bronze? It's only the best color ever. They were like, it's not discontinued, what are you talking about? And I was like, I'm sorry, then why isn't it on the Sephora site? Apparently, it was a mistake. Like, they just didn't list it. And so, I don't know how that works between brands and retailers where they like get together and they're like what colors are we gonna list oh here are the pictures or you know I don't know how that works so apparently someone somewhere dropped the ball letting Sephora know that you know they were missing burnished bronze so I just applied it to the lid and now I am taking a synthetic brush not a natural bristle brush a synthetic brush that means it has fake fibers um, it's usually you can tell right away, they feel kind of plasticky, and I'm using that to blend out the color. It's very easy, once you figure it out. It looks a little wonky at the beginning, see it kind of looks like a raccoon eye. But we go in with powder shadows and just blend it out even further so it looks better. So I'm doing both eyes at the same time, just so you can see. So there's that, we're gonna do it again on the other side. These are really soft, so you have to be careful not to, you know, go too ham sandwich. And I know that's, that means a lot coming from someone like me that has little to no self-control with anything. A really beautiful burgundy shade, bronzy burgundy shade. Um, but once you blend it out, it pulls a little purple. And that completes this tutorial. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you guys, I am so upset about something. So I forgot to set my alarm for the Jaclyn Hill lipstick launch. Okay, you know how I was talking about at the intro of this video, how, you know, drama and beauty channels and beauty community. You know what? I have to say, as audacious and loud and, and just... I can't even describe Jaclyn Hill's personality because it's always been the same, you know? <laughs> Do you guys remember when she was in that tiny itty bitty apartment and she would film in her kitchen on that round table with that horrendous white fridge behind her? Okay, her personality has always been the same and she gets so much flack for being obnoxious and for being annoying and for thinking she's a diva and she's always had that grand like celebrity like personality 
character personality. You know, I don't know her in person. We've never met. There's a lot of YouTubers that are very different from how they portray themselves in content versus in real life. Um, and um, I've never met her, so I don't know if it's a shtick, but if it is, it's been the same since day one. So anyway, um, there has been so much hype around her brand and it's been in the making for years. It's been out for a while um, and it's nice to see it finally come to fruition. Anyway, um, we're gonna go in with, man, I don't remember which one of these I used. I think it was gingerbread latte, this one here. Um, anyway, so it's nice to see it finally come to fruition and I wanted to order three lipsticks and then do a review on it, but I totally forgot to set an alarm. And by the time I realized it was because all the posts that I was seeing on Instagram were like sold out. Oh, you know, I had these many lipsticks in my cart and then they got taken out of my cart. So all the posts were about it being sold out. So I was like, drats. And if you don't get on these types of products, and if you don't get your YouTube video out soon enough, then it's all you're gonna see in your feed for the next like few weeks, you know? So if it's something you still wanna see or wanna know about, maybe when they do a restock I can get some, but you'll have to let me know because I feel like my uh, momentum is gone at this point. Momentum, that's right, right? Did I use it correctly? It's funny, you guys. Parker's oldest daughter will often say, I, I don't think you use that correctly. <laughs> like she's trying to be polite. She's like, mm, pretty sure you didn't use that correctly. And I'm like, oh really? So we look it up and I'm like, oh man, well this is embarrassing. But it's usually me trying to be cool and I'll use like a word and then we pull up Urban Dictionary and it's just totally not what I should have said. Um, it's usually pretty funny. You guys, I'm almost 35, okay? This is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. I'm not in my 20s like most people here on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I tip gingerbread latte on a big fluffy blending brush. Then I'm going to take my finger and dip it into bake it till you make it. That's this one. Uh, let's use this one. And that is only going to go right here on about two thirds of the lid. I don't like to carry it too far out because I don't want it to look too metallic y. Like, this isn't a Christmas look, you guys. It's more of a just regular neutral everyday look. <laughs> how easy that was? Okay, now I'm going back with that big fluffy brush. Just kind of running it over, softening the edges a little bit. Um, I do have to say, you guys, I want to give you guys a very special thank you, thank you, thank you for all the love and sweet comments that you left on my um, vlog where I told you guys that Parker and his daughters are moving in. So, um, it was a hard video for me to film and I was like, I have to make sure I look cute and I have to make sure that I look, you know, I have my makeup on and it, it's professional because it's kind of a big deal announcement. And I was like, these are my weekend vlogs. I'm so informal in my vlogs. I mean, it's, it's real life. It's how I am. And it's kind of like, I want you guys to feel like you're going to your friend's house where you don't have to call and tell them that you're going. And when you show up, you open the fridge and get a snack. Like I want it to feel that way because that's how I see it. Um, it's informal, it's everyday stuff, it's real life stuff, and that's just how it is. And I wanted to get it off my mind, I wanted to get it off my heart, I wanted to tell you guys. Um, now I'm going to go in with Reindeer Paws, that's this chocolate brown right here, and a flat shader brush, smaller than the one we used for the brow bone. And just a little tap, nothing major, and we're going to run that on the lower lash line. So yeah, I did get a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of comments that were basically along the lines of, do you guys see how I just brought it about two thirds in, not all the way to the inner corner. Um, it was basically like, life is too short, it's not a dress rehearsal for you to, you know, for you to continuously live your life trying to follow some rules that God knows who made them up, you know? <laughs> what they mean and how do they affect someone. Um, I feel like I did things the right way the first time and it didn't work out for me so why is that going to stop or prevent me from doing things a different way um i want to always set a good example for the two bonus babies in my life now you know because they are girls and i am a direct example or inspiration to them on a daily basis so 
I want to do things in a way that um, I inspire them to live a life that makes them happy, makes them feel fulfilled, but that also encourages them to fight for their worth and to never settle for anything, you know? And so it's, it's hard for me with the background that I grew up in and then being in this position. When it comes down to moral decisions, the future implications are something you know nothing about until the future arrives. And wondering what's going to happen in the future or what those implications will be is like walking around with an umbrella just in case it rains. You know, like why are you spending your time on the what ifs or the worry or the doubt or the overthinking um, when it when it'll it, it might actually work out? Like like the little sign in the back says, what if it actually works out? And I am, I'm taking that same color reindeer paws on a smaller shader brush and just bumping that right on the edge, right there. Just in this little nook, nothing crazy. Just a little definition. Um, it's just, oh man, I feel like as humans, our life is hard enough already. It's challenging enough. It's expensive enough. And we just feel, we just make it so much harder for us, for ourselves. <laughs> Who's walking in your shoes every day? Huh, Karen? Who's walking in your shoes? You are. So uh, make sure they're comfortable and make sure they're the ones you wanted to wear and make sure they're the ones that you feel pretty in. You know what I'm saying? All right, you guys, I just did my lashes off camera because I didn't want to bore you guys with my mascara performance. Um, I use the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara, one of my absolute favorites. When it goes on sale for 21 Days of Beauty, I'm like, add to cart, add to cart, goes to store, adds to basket. <laughs> so now we're going to do face. Um, and for face, we're going to do the same bronzer that I always use as contour, and that is the um, Charlotte Tilbury Bronze and Glow, Superstar Bronze and Glow. You guys, I never say the name correctly. Film Star Bronze and Glow Face Sculpt and Highlight. It comes in two shades now, so that's pretty cool. Um, and I just use it as a gentle contour, but also um, as a little bit of a bronzer, especially now that I'm tan. Um, you know, now that I say, now that I'm tan, I should start flashing my shoulder to you guys, like part of the joke. What do we think about that? No, then it might just look like I'm looking for an excuse to show you guys my shoulder. But um, this color, oh man, you guys, I love this color. I can actually put this on um, when I'm not wearing any powder, any foundation, any anything, and it still gives you a really nice definition, like a natural definition, you know? It comes in a fair medium shade and then a, no, fair light, I think, and then a medium deep. Oh, let's see. Fair medium. I wonder what the other one is. Hmm. I had to zoom you guys out because you were like way up in my face and I had to keep bending over. You don't want to keep looking at my roots, you know? So now for blush, we're going to go in with Too Faced Papa Don't Peach. Boom. I wish they changed the container on this thing because it's in this little metal thing and it just doesn't really close. There I go using Too Faced again. I just can't quit you. Um, 127 from MAC. And I love this blush because you could totally just overdo it and it still looks cute. It's one of those blushes that's like very forgiving. If you guys have someone that's like starting off in makeup or you're starting off in makeup, very, very flattering, flattering, super flattering blush. It has sort of like a satin shimmer finish to it without any glitter or sparkles. And so it just really softens um, your cheeks and it gives it a beautiful glow without being sparkly, you know? So after this, we're gonna go in with one of the best highlighters I have ever used in the entire world, ever, 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 ever. And that is from RMS Beauty. It's called the Luminizing Powder in Grand Dame. Um, the only thing I have to say, it, as cute as the packaging is, see how it's like clear acrylic? As cute as it is, I chip a nail every time I open it. It shouldn't be this hard to open, <laughs> but um, that's what it looks like. It's one of those highlighters that like 
melts into your face. It doesn't... You know when you put some highlighters on, you look like, Shh, that's where I put on my highlighter, right there. Shh, you see the, you see the, it looks almost like a street or like a road. It's right there. That's where the highlighter went. This one just, I don't know, it just melts into your skin and it gives your skin a really beautiful, illuminated look without being a streak, you know? And again, if it's one of those products that you're learning how to use, and you're worried you might have a heavy hand, aka me, um, it's very forgiving. It melts into the skin. You could wear it over your sunscreen like a cream product. It blends in really beautifully. Looking at it in the pan doesn't do it justice because it looks like Mary Luminizer, but Mary Luminizer is a very, very aggressive highlighter. I love it, but it is extremely intentional. Um, this one, when you put it on and you blend it in or buff it into the skin, it just it doesn't look like you're wearing highlighter, it just looks like you're glowing. Unless you dot it on your nose and that's a whole different story. That's a personal choice, you guys. <laughs> so that is it for the face. Now for lips. For lips, we're gonna go in with Chocolate Lust from Maybelline. Um, it's one of their shine colors. I don't remember the actual name of this line, but look how shiny it is. I like to thin it out so I will apply it and then I'll remove some of it because it's a little too brown. But I love how comfortable it is. It's extremely hydrating and it reminds me a lot of Ex-Girlfriend from Urban Decay, which is my favorite lipstick of all time, but just a little more chocolatey. It's a lot more brown, but the formula is similar. The coverage is similar. It's just a different, it's just a different tone. And as much as I like matte lips, I have raisiny wrinkle lips. Hashtag team raisin lips. Do you guys remember that? So if I can help myself out by using a satin, a shiny, a lip gloss, any sort of non-matte finish, I'm going to. So do you see how it looks now? And then I go in and I blot a little bit of it off. And that's the finished look. What do you guys think? And that completes the look. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Now, let's say that you don't have the Gingerbread Spice Palette. It was limited edition. It's no longer available. I think the only way you guys can get it now is on eBay for like $100, and it could totally be a fake. So like I told you guys at the beginning, it's not anything special. There's nothing unique about it. In fact, if you guys have the Zoeva Cocoa Blend Palette, um, you could achieve something very similar to the look I have right now. If you have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette, same thing. You could do the same look I have right now. Or even, this is probably the closest match, the Urban Decay Naked Heat. Um, you could do this very exact look and you probably, probably wouldn't even need this caviar stick from Laura Mercier. Now, if you choose not to get the Laura Mercier Caviar Stick, you might hurt my feelings a little bit because it's amazing. But if you have this palette, you wouldn't need this. You would just go in with like, I don't know, uh, Enfuego and Scorched and layer those on your lid and you'd get the same exact look that I have right now. So you don't need to have the Gingerbread Spice Palette. It was a little overhyped. Um, don't go getting it on eBay. It's way too expensive. And like I said, you have all these colors, all these colors in your collection already. Anyway, everything that I use will be listed and linked in the description box below of this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to check out Cooking Break with Danny, my new cooking channel, I will also leave that link in the description box below. I love you guys so much and you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye, guys. Say what up, peeps. What up, dogs? They're pandas. What up, dogs? No, I said they're pandas. Say hi, pandas. What up, dogs? Hey, 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 hey. I raised you better. Come on.